Hello and welcome to the SE25 cast. Today our two-man pod discusses the results of the international break, the palace players that were involved in it, and discover the status of youth football in Taiwan. I need to record some ukulele for this. Um, okay, welcome to the SE25 cast, episode 9. The, uh, the filler. This is where we fill the awkward gap in between matches we're actually interested in. And in advance, I think this is shit. Wait to see what's coming in the summer. Um, I'm joined by our soccer's Nick, Nick TM of uh, multi subreddit fame. How are you, Nick? I'm very well. I am currently on a break from moderating our soccer, by which I mean doing nothing on the internet it's 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 pretty good you know it's been, it's been a nice nice couple of days watching a lot of international football excellent there's been some quite good matches actually on them um, i'm have... gonna i'm gonna say I, th- I think there's um it's one of those periods where i have a little more sympathy for managers um particularly you know you've got gareth who's a palace boy and um got a little more time for him than than other managers and i think these are those periods where players hopes get destroyed because you you get your little call up like i'd i'd say tarkowski or whatever you get your little call up you're like oh god i can't play my summer holiday i might be going to russia and then you stand on somebody's foot you realize yep going to benedorm with everyone else yeah, I heard about that. I didn't actually see this uh, the most recent England game, but apparently VAR made an appearance, and uh, lots of people in the crowd were outraged. But it seems like uh, on second second watching for a lot of them, uh, it looked like a legitimate foul, if a bit of a soft one. I think he'll make the squad anyway, Tarkowski. I think he's a good player, and we're not exactly overflowing with talent at centre back. You know, I mean, who else have we got? Smalling's out of form. Phil Jones is constantly injured. Uh, Gary Cahill's not getting minutes for Chelsea. Um, who else is? Oh, who is Tarkowski's? Well, um, I, I, you know, not audition. not that we're on a Palace podcast, but I'd I'd venture. Oh yeah, very handsome James Tompkins would uh, <laughs> would have a shout. And if he wasn't injured, um, England's never yet to be called upon Scott Dan. But I think everybody in the Homesdale would be ready to fight. Gareth Southgate and Jesse needs one. And then you watch him actually come last in a running race between a one-legged man and whoever comes last in the actual Paralympics. And that's when you realise that's why Scott Dan probably isn't in the... Yeah, he does have the turning circle of an ocean liner. But he's a decent player. Um, On the other hand, being third choice for a club only recently in the relegation zone probably isn't the kind of England credentials they're looking for. No, exactly. And and James Tompkins, who probably would be in there on looks, may sneak in if there was some kind of award for, you know, best well groomed beard. Let's say facial hair. Yeah, exactly. Oh, get out. It's horrible. <laughs> but um no, you know, I, I think he if, if there was a squad based on the uh, the stereotype of what women look for in footballers, I'm sure James Tompkins would be Probably captured material, but uh, it's absolutely not in Gareth's plans. Um, and yeah, I think on the VAR thing, I think if it was the other way around, England fans would be delighted that Italy were robbed. Unfortunately, the shoe was on the other foot, and uh, England, who were minus all Palace players tonight, except for the under 20s, um, where Juan Bissaka um, managed to play because he, his ban <laughs> hasn't kicked in from getting sent off a week ago. Um, so yeah, and wan Bissaka managed to pick up two yellow cards. Uh, I think he's only been booked for us once in our recent games. Managed to get sent off for England. Um, and then, yeah, good old England stuck with him and brought him on as a second-half substitute in tonight's loss. Portugal. Mm. That's right, isn't it? We did lose, didn't we? Not making that uh, up. No, against... Portugal? No, we beat them 3-0. Oh, that's right. I'm sorry. We won 3-0. There we go. Yeah. No, oh. it was... Uh, yeah. I'm I'm hoping 
you know, with this kind of, if he's, he's only recently been uh, involved in the setup, I think he's not had a long international career. Um, but uh, yeah, no, that, that'd be nice, wouldn't it? If we, uh, maybe, maybe if he continues this kind of form into next season. Uh, yeah. And I see him, uh, see him playing for England proper at some point. I think so. I think particularly if, um, if we keep playing with the Kyle Walker right of the back three, then um, I think he's got half a chance because I think Palace are... If I was Andros Townsend, I'd be disappointed not to have made the England squad because I think he does a job up and down that wing defensively as well as offensively. But it, it's not a big surprise for a team uh, struggling to avoid relegation that their attacking players aren't getting in the uh, England team. But I think Wan Bissaka as a converted winger come fullback, as long as he's half reasonable at getting forward, I think there's a chance of him challenging Kieran Trippier, who is no, no, he's, he's no right back Pele. Um, uh, yeah, I, I, I like Trips. I think he's a decent player. Um, but you do wonder if they're going to be persisting with Carl Walker at centre back, which I don't know. I don't know about that. But if they do, then they'll need somebody to be backing up Trippier, and there's not a huge amount of players past Walker and Trippier that can play at right back for England to a kind of good level. And besides, Southgate tends to like bringing up a few of the younger lads to uh, try and bolster the squad, get them a bit of experience. So who knows? Yeah, exactly. I think that's a, that's a positive note to start on. I think um, for those who weren't in the know, um, and Nick only discovered this just now when I told him, and I only discovered this midway through my podcast prep and I was trying to work out which Palace players had played in the international period and who hadn't um, Palace actually produced a page on the website Palace's internationals when they are in action uh, and a picture of Fosu Mensah oh. with perhaps the least flattering picture of Timmy that I've seen in a while it, uh, it looks like he's about to get smashed or he's just been <laughs> in the face um, yeah so the the, the internationals that uh, have played have got Hennessy uh, playing for Wales now I it's it's remarkable to me as as a, a Palace fan over the last however many years we're talking 30 plus years here that we only have Hennessy as a, as a Welshman at the moment. we've had yeah. some we've terrible had Welsh players so lately yeah uh, there is in fact a page uh, on the Palace website that lists all the international players that England, uh, that Palace have had. I think we've had, yeah, we've had way more Welsh internationals than we have England. Yeah. So, oh yeah. And like such amazing players as Darcy Blake, uh, Andy Dorman. You remember Jermaine Easter? <laughs> I, I was mean, just gonna, yeah. Andy yeah. Dorman was the one on the for my tongue because Jeez, I, I Andy mean, Dorman was wank, wasn't he? <laughs> yes, exactly. And I think that said a lot about Wales at the time. Um, Apparently, we had somebody called Tom Jones, which. Uh, do, do you reckon it's the same fella? Didn't we have, and I, I'm not looking at that page, but didn't we have a Jazz? Jazz Richards. Well, he actually had one cap while he was here. Yeah. Jazz Richards like was, um, if I remember correctly, he was a ex Cardiff uh, kind of utility back who had yeah. some kind of slight. Uh, oh, was, was it him? Or, no, sorry, it was Darcy Blake who had some unfortunate kind of uh, mental health issues. No, Jazz Richards was just bad. That's the yeah. one. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. That was his issue. Was, of, yeah. Speaking of slightly better, uh, slightly better ones, we had Johnny Williams, obviously. Yep. D uh, Danny Gavadon was all right for us, I thought. Yeah. See, Danny Gavadon, I think, is probably, and I dare I say, not say the, the best Welshman to have played for us, but we yeah. got perhaps the best of Danny Gavadon <laughs> at a time where we needed just a big lump at the back ah, to be relied upon. Huge. I remember seeing Gavadon in the flesh and. The man was wider than he was tall. Absolute unit. Yeah. I, you know, and you know, put a, sh put a shift in. Didn't really make that many mistakes. Smashed opposition forwards. What more can you ask? Yeah, absolutely. I think absolutely. apparently the most caps while playing for Palace go to Joe Ledley. Yeah. Beating out Eric Young. So good for him. I missed Joe. Got Eric Young. Wow. Eric Young um, is before my time. <laughs> Sadly, not before mine. So far beyond my time. Yeah, I, I forget whose comment I was to in the sub about Gareth Southgate. I, I 
I'm not eloquent enough to describe quite how disappointing Gareth Southgate was as a Palace player. <laughs> he, um, I actually met him um, when Villa played, I think it was the FA Cup semi, and they came to the Selsden Park Hotel, and a friend of mine lived near there, and we were riding our bikes. How old I was, maybe 11 or 12. What kind of bike? Penny farthing? <laughs> yeah, exactly. Yeah, wooden, wooden bike with uh, <laughs> yeah, wagon wheels. <laughs> it was... Uh, but no, we, um, yeah, we, we bumped into Gareth Southgate and I, God knows who else he was with. And he was really chatty and pleasant. Um, ah, he does seem like a nice fella, to be honest. Yeah, he really does. But anyway, we, we've gone off topic. We, yes. We're talking about Hennessy playing for Wales. Hennessy was in Wales' biggest win for a long time as they destroyed China with a Gareth mm-hmm. Bale hat-trick. And then... From came up against, the Uruguay. Yeah, exactly. They came up against Uruguay. And... Edison Cavani taught him a little bit of a lesson. Oh, it was a hell of a goal. Really, really good. I mean, he had one of those ruled out, Cavani, um, a few years back. I think it was against Spain or something. Exact same kind of thing. Overhead, beautiful. And he had it ruled out for offside, which I thought was unfair. I think if somebody scores an overhead kick in a friendly, it should just be allowed regardless, isn't it? Yeah, you would think so. In, in any friendly, this is where... Yeah, like you say, that's where you want to see the David Beckham's from the halfway line, all that kind of stuff. And yeah, don't rule them out. Absolutely. Okay, so Hennessy, I think we've covered. Um, I think we're delighted he's not injured, but if he had, I think a significant portion of the Palace face would have been interested to have seen a new is it Argentinian. I forget what he is. Who? The, oh, what's his name? Carvel. Oh, this is the new goal he called. <laughs> ah, Cavalieri. Diego. That's Cavalieri. it. Thank you. Brazilian, I believe. Brazilian, even better. Yes. Excellent. Ex- Goalie Liverpool. Neymar. That's right. Roy Hodgson's friend from the north. Mm. Um, I don't think he'll play much, might you? No, I don't. But I'd, I, I'd be happy if we played him. Yeah, absolutely. absolutely. I mean, how much worse can he be? Exactly. Exactly. And, uh, <laughs> Oh, you know, you and I will receive death threats when he does play on Saturday. Apparently, atrocious, <laughs> but um, yeah, no, you know, I'm I'm pleased for Heno that he was involved in the international scene and got a reasonable result in that. I mean, in the six 0 I'm not sure he touched the ball, but um, I think he pulled off one decent save in the the highlights that I saw. Um, one more than he usually does. Exactly. <laughs> exactly. Um. Yeah, and then we've gone through wan which brings us to one of our few players who wasn't uh, called back from international duty uh, for injury, but Suare. Suare got a run out for did Senegal. He, he did, he did. He actually started. Um, just check that I'm lying to the, you. Uh, because... what, who were they against? Bosnia and Herzegovina? Um, they played, in the game on the Palace website, they played against Uzbekistan. Ah, yes, that was, yeah, yeah, that was on Friday. Yeah. Um, and yeah, they drew that one all. Looks like an absolute thriller. But uh, they played today. <laughs> they played today as well. Nil nil. Bosnia, absolute. If I mean, if we're talking about thrillers. Um, yeah. He didn't start that game, mind you. But yeah, it's it's nice to see him. Nice to see him just getting some minutes, really, isn't it? I really, I really hope he's. I have, you know, we've barely watched him. Obviously, as Palace fans, we've barely seen him play any minutes at all. And yeah, well, he got seventy-five minutes in their first game, and yeah, for me, it's I mean, not hugely interesting, but he he put a nice picture on either his Twitter or his Facebook or something about how he was playing with um, uh, Idris Gay. Um, and apparently, Idris Gay is his super buddy from the international scene. Um, yeah, and he was saying how pleased he was to be back with um, But yeah, he's in the team with, with lots of, uh, I'd say, maybe not lots of Premier League reg- regulars, but you've got Ndoy, you've got uh, Nias, you've got Traore, and I don't think he's in the Premier League anymore, but Papa Dula uh, Bodji. Papa Dula Bodji. Um, yeah. Does, uh, on, Henri Saive, does he is he still playing for Newcastle? He can't be, surely. Uh, no. uh, he's on loan from Newcastle, so we'll count it. Uh, I think, yeah, who else have they got? I'm not sure. 
Oh, it's Sadio Mane, of course. Oh. But um, I don't think he got on the pitch. Um, Rested, injured? I don't think I mean, he's on the, named on the bench. Um, I, I, so I didn't. The, the highlights that I saw of the soiree <laughs> highlights were in French. So um, <laughs> if they said he was injured, I didn't catch that. God damn it. They're, they're busy resting their star players ahead of the Liverpool games. Meanwhile, Luka Milivojevic is playing 90 minutes for his country. But right. I know, that, and that's where we've got to balance this out. Would you rather have had a player who flew six, seven hours, maybe more, to Senegal and played no minutes, but trained in like 30 degree heat in Senegal near the equator? Or player who went to Barnet in North London <laughs> and played 90 minutes in Nigeria. Um, oh, it's a tough one. I mean, yeah. <laughs> I, I'm, I'm amazed. I mean, I, I don't know how Roy Hodgson works and I don't know the relationship that Roy has with um, the Nigerian team, let oh, alone I'm, the Nigerian probably, management. He probably lived there for a couple of years when he was young. <laughs> I mean, <laughs> You well, know, he speaks he probably, French, so he there's every speaks some Yoruba or something as well, doesn't he? he speaks every language. <laughs> but yeah, so unfortunately, um, for those who haven't haven't followed this, um, Luca, um, as we record this now on the, on Tuesday evening, Luca played 90 minutes of the Serbia 2-0 victory over Nigeria. Um, I mean, it, it must have been a fairly reasonable game. Because uh, Alex Iwobi played 90 minutes. Uh, Victor Moses played 45. He was subbed off for uh, Odio Nigalo. Um, Wilfred Ndidi played 80-something minutes. Um, yeah, so that, that Nigerian team wasn't a poor team that they I'm, put out. Yeah, it's, I'm not familiar with their back five, but the rest of their team, Ndidi, Anazi, Jolobi, uh, Iwobi, Musa, Victor Moses, these are all, you know, these are all players that are in top leagues in Europe. It's a decent, decent team. And yeah, and I, the Serbian team. The as well, like Igalo, uh, Moses Simon, I think he plays for a Belgian team. Uh, yeah, there's, there's a couple of other, Ola Aina, who I think still is probably out on loan from Chelsea somewhere. Yeah. yeah it's, it's, he probably doesn't even know himself. <laughs> <laughs> Just gets letters occasionally signed by. Uh, the big Russian. Mm. Thanks for your contribution. <laughs> yeah, no, but I think that this game, it's one of those games that I think if it had been on the night that it was more convenient for me to get there, I'd have quite liked to have gone along to this. However, I have a few Nigerian friends and I have a few Serbian friends. I wouldn't have wanted to get in the middle of a Nigerian versus Niger- uh, Nigerian-Serbian rumble. <laughs> you say that? I, every, every Nigerian I've met is very nice. <laughs> <laughs> They all are, but I, I don't want to know fight any Serbians. <laughs> yeah, no, the Serbians are all right as well. They they like a drink, and uh, yeah, they're but they're they're kind of roughly tufty. But anyway, okay. yeah, poor old Luca ran out his ninety minutes. Um, it looks like every other single uh, Premier League player in that game was subbed off, apart from Milivojevic, which is yes. really goddamn frustrating. I think like, so. I, I, yeah, I kind of had the same thought. But, yeah. I, Luca also, you kind of know, he's probably the one that didn't want to come on. Oh, almost certainly. You know, when, when, when they put up number four, he's there staring at the sky, looking, you know, tying his boots up. No, 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 you can't meet me. Get Kolarov off or someone else. <laughs> but, Still, um, yes. Yeah, so he, you know, good for him. Um, and because he made 90 minutes, I th- hopefully he's not got injured. Um, we look forward to Roy's press conference later in the week to uh, confirm that. But oh yeah, broken leg. Exactly. <laughs> yeah, got made he, the 90 minutes with a fractured toe or something. No, he he, he tripped over a pothole in Barnet. There you go. Yeah. That's Victim of moped crime. <laughs> <laughs> um, talking of of victim, um, that brings us to. Tim Fossumenta, Patrick Van Arnholt, hmm. who um, I don't think we covered them in the last pod, um, but they both got a run out of Holland. Um, 
a little shout out here to Gyro Riederwald, who I feel sorry for because on the two or three games he played for Palace in that kind of January period uh, and a little in early February, he, he, I actually thought he played well enough, particularly against top teams. So I've got a call up here. He it's played weird. no worse than Fosu Mensa, certainly. Yeah, he, he seems to play up to the level of the opposition. When, when he's been kind of hustled about and moved around by kind of big, big lower half teams, he's not looked quite so comfortable. But against, was it Man City, I think, where he had a fantastic game? Like yeah, he's and it really Spurs. Good. Yeah, yeah, that, them too. They, he's looked really good. And I'd love to see more of him in the midfield. I mean, especially if the rumours about Kabai moving on are going to be true. I think he's yeah. the kind of natural heir there. Maybe not quite as offensive, but in terms of work rate and in terms of defensive responsibility and passing range, you know, he's got he's got everything you could possibly want, really. Yeah, no, I don't disagree. I'm I'm a I'm a growing fan of of Gyros, um, and he seemed very shy when I took Junior to go and get his autograph, and that oh. endeared me to him. He was scared of a small child, but um, no, that you know. We're not here to talk about those who didn't make it. We have enough Palace players who didn't make international scores. Let's talk about the ones that did. Mm-hmm. Fossu and Van Arnholt. Um, Fossu, did he even get a run out in that England game? I don't think he started. Uh, Van Arnholt, gone. He did not play, I don't think. However, he did play, um, he did play yesterday against Portugal, uh, where they won 3-0. Well, he, he, got a, he got a run out anyway. I don't think he started. Uh, no, I, I actually, um, I was really impressed with how Pat played against England. Um, he, he actually made a couple of the mistakes you see him make in Palace shirt quite often, where people run behind him and he, he's not um, scanning over his shoulders, perhaps as regularly as he needs to be. And he's not, you know, I don't know if he spent too much time in banging clubs. And the hearing's not as good as it should be. But he doesn't seem to hear the wingers sneaking in behind him or the strikers. But that said, he was up against Kyle Walker, Trippier, um, Raheem Sterling, Jesse Lingard, those kind of players. And I thought he did admirably. He's Most been of... in great form. He really yeah. has. This, I mean, I've always, I've always liked him. I've always been a bit of a kind of Patrick Van Anholt defender. Uh, initially, that was sort of born out of lots of Sunderland fans kind of getting up and going, oh, well, you just paid that much money for him. And I was going, it's not a bad deal. Have you seen who we've got a left back? And yeah. then, to be fair, quite rightly saying that it, you know, it shouldn't factor into who, how, who's your current left back in how good a deal it is, which is fair, but fuck him. Um, That's the spirit, Nick. Absolutely. Um, but yeah, no, he's, he's played really well this season. I uh, hesitate to say it, but I think he might, you know, on the whole, be our best player? Question mark? Maybe. I don't know. Either way, he's a really tidy little tidy little player and probably the best finisher in our squad, terrifyingly. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I, that, that's, um, that's an interesting one. Best finisher. I'm not sure I'm agreeing with you on best finisher. His, his passion in, in the best P-A-S-H-U-N way has caught me by surprise. His work rate has seems better this year than it was last year. Um, yeah, definitely doesn't give up. I mean, maybe that's the thing. Maybe that's the thing with Hodgson, isn't it? Bit of bit of man management, bit of motivation can do wonders to a player. Yeah, I, I agree. I I think um, I think Pat also, you know, he he spent some time early in the season where he was out of favour, and when he got his opportunity, was a little pony. And when he's come back through Schlupp's injury, he's he seized the opportunity. And work rate's been good, performance has been good. And I think, you know, as Palace fans, we'll invariably uh, support a player who is rubbish but tries hard. Oh, it's in our DNA, really, isn't it? Yeah, absolutely. And Still got a poster of Calvin Andrews somewhere around here. <laughs> <laughs> and yeah, that that may be pushing the limits of uh, you <laughs> acceptability talk about my Calvin like that. <laughs> Absolute <laughs> hero. But I, I, you know, I, I wouldn't put Pat necessarily in the same conversation as, as as Calvin. But 
Yeah, no, he's been really good, and I felt he deserved his call up, and I was pleased that he got a start. Um, it was unfortunate that the rest of Holland didn't turn up for that match because, yeah, I felt he was good. Um, the next, go on. No, 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 absolutely. I thought he, yeah, he was good, especially when England kept on throwing two or three players at him quite often, really isolating him. And I thought he looked fine. I mean, uh, maybe a year and a half ago, you know, when he first arrived, he would properly panic if he had two people to look after down the flank. And we'd always have to have somebody ahead of him looking after him so that he could go one-on-one with anyone. But since then, he's really improved at that kind of um, delegating duties, you know, passing off the passing off the guy cutting inside to a centre-back and then following the other guy making the outside run. And he's got enough speed to catch up with anyone. But yeah. what's quite heartening about it is that you don't see him recently anyway, using his speed to bail himself out of bad situations. I mean, you see that with Fosso Mensa a lot. He'll make a, a mistake, he'll do something stupid, and because he physically he's an absolute monster, he'll he'll you know get up, he'll speed off after him, he'll push him off the ball with raw strength. Uh, Van Anholt, man, been intercepting balls, he's been reading play pretty well. I'm really heartened by how he's been playing this year. No, I've been... Um, yeah, it, it, for me, I'm I'm always happiest when any any manager or coach and you know we don't really know who's been um working with pat directly but if you can see a player that you've taken on either fulfill their potential or improve or after a dip in form really get back to where they should be um i always find that quite heartening Mm, because i think it, it says quite a lot about the the club if you're actually getting players improving you know it's an awful lot better than you know and i I don't want to bring jose Mourinho more into this conversation he needs to be but that's a manager who the only way he seems to bring players out of their things is either by giving them a pat on the back or the luke shaw calling them out in front of the press and yeah, that was working that, wonders yeah exactly and that's where i think We've not had Roy, despite some appalling performances, various Palace players this season. We've not had many players, if any, really get called out. And not only have we had some of our poor performing players improve, we've actually had some of our better performing players improve. I think <clears throat> this season's Wilf is a, is a noticeable improvement on last season's Wilf. There's, there's still room for improvement, but... Um, he does get better in kind of subtle ways each season, really. It's, uh, you know, two or three seasons ago, he'd be, he'd be working on the way to just beat a man reliably rather than doing it flashily. Now he's working on kind of this season. He's got really good at his game sense where he's going to be making room for others, not just himself. You know, he's, he would always dance around out on the wing, but Often he'd do it just so that he could beat one man and have his cross cleared by a defender. Now he'll he'll beat a man, he'll track back and try and draw in another, make some space, do something smart like that. And he's just really good at it now. And even though, you know, he hasn't really played that much football this year, and when he has, he's been excellent, but maybe maybe not always up to his amazing sparkling Wilf Zaha standards. But it's nice to see him getting better, even when he isn't necessarily ripping everyone apart. No, I, I concur with everything you said. Um, and talking of improved players, um, I'm going to use that as a nice segue into a player who isn't playing in this international window because he's injured. Jeffrey Schlupp uh, is a Ghanaian international. Mm. Um, and yet, yeah, should have been playing. They had games, and the, uh, I think the coach actually mentioned that he was hoping to get to Jeffrey over, but um, he wasn't able to travel, um, which I, I think he's another player for us this season that I've enjoyed watching play under Hodgson. Um, he's a little more of a four-four-two type player than, than the, perhaps the flexibility given by some of our other players. But yeah, I, I like Jeff. I'd, I'd have enjoyed seeing him play in a Ghana shirt and, I hope he gets his chance at the next uh, the next international. I see. I don't know where to stand on Jeffrey Schlup. I think he's not quite right for the kind of 
formation we're trying to play. He might have been at a three at the back, but at the moment when we're playing with um, two wide men who push up quite far and two fullbacks behind him, he's kind of caught in the middle. He's, he'd be a perfect wing back, but he's not a natural left back, and he's probably not a natural out and out uh, forward thinking winger. So he's kind of trapped in that weird, weird little in between bit, which you'd be perfect for in a left as a left wing back, but not quite as anything else. I believe didn't he start? Um, did he have some minutes in the centre of midfield the other day? I think. He did. When we play that midfield three that goes yeah. that doesn't have a lot of width. He he plays in that, and it, it kind of terrifies me. <laughs> um, because occasionally, in that way that... Um, and it, you said you, you didn't watch England tonight, so I'm not going to labour that at this point, but tonight, for the first time, I saw Raheem Sterling coming short to the defence, picking the ball up, and then actually dribbling it, driving it, and passing his way up the pitch to bring the England team and the ball up the pitch. That is what I think Jeff Schlupp's mum thinks Jeff Schlupp can do. <laughs> <laughs> I just oh. don't think Jeff Schlupp can actually do that. He might. And I, just, I was going to say, before you'd finished your, your point a moment ago, Jeff Schlupp is, the, for me, the epitome of a Palace player because he's a championship-level player who is just trying his little level best. It's, it's, it's a championship level player with a Champions League level of trying. Bless him. Yeah. Yep, I think that's fair. And I think, to, to the point of a moment ago, if, if we can train improvements into him, if we can somehow get him to be a little bit better, then... Because um, he does he does show glimpses of it when he does position himself correctly. But he's another one like Fossi Mensa, who they, not they don't need to learn, but they cover their mistakes with a million miles an hour sprinting. Yeah. Um, and we say this with Pat and Wilf being our two fastest players, but I think that's more because Schlupp and Fossi Mentor only have to sprint 20 yards at a time. <laughs> but, um, yeah, I I think, um, uh, yeah, I, I like Jeff. Seems like such an S. And he had what Junior considered to be the best car of all players, which was sadly just a regular um, C, CL63 Merc, but it had that blackboard paint on it. Uh, and when Junior told Jeff it was the best car of all the players, Jeff gave him a little fist bump and a smile. And <laughs> made his day. I remember Leicester fans saying that they, he was a big fan favourite there, not just because he was one of their, came through their youth, but also he was just generally a really nice fella by all accounts. Yeah, I think he's got that kind of sacco factor that mm. um, he's slightly bonkers on the ball and he tries hard. And yeah, it's hard not to like that. Absolutely. Um, we've gone off a, on a tangent. I, I'm going to bring it back by talking about Will Donkin. Do you know who Will Donkin is? Will Donkin is one of our youth players, isn't he? Is he? he is, he is. Yeah. And he's played Nailed this it. week. Can you name his country? This is I, I will happily remove this from the pod. Can I put you on the spot with no prep? Can you name his country? It's not any of the home nations before you think. If it's, it's not any of the home nations, he's probably uh, uh, Will Donkin. Okay, so he's uh, probably do from you wanna, Do you want a clue? Right? Uh, hold on. Asian nation, I reckon. Yep, yep, you're, you're correct. Okay. Uh, yeah, let's have a clue. They played against Singapore, and they played in. I don't know if this is going to give it away. I don't think it's going to give it away because I don't think you're going to get the name of the country correct. They played in Taiwan against Singapore. <laughs> they played in Taiwan. Oh, you're trying to trick me. That'll be Chinese Taipei. Yeah. <laughs> that's fantastic. <laughs> nice. That's fantastic. That was good. That was good. Yeah. I so really he... Chinese Taipei. Yeah, Chinese Taipei. And this this is where I think poor old Will Donkin is probably um, so far out of his depth. Um, there was that player the other day who had to get dressed in, I forget what team it's for. It's one of these FA Cup teams where he, he's only like 15 and has to share and change on his own. That's kind of what I imagine it's like for Will Donkin. 
He's 17. Barely features in our under 18 and under 23. He is good enough under 18, but I think we just have bigger, faster lad. And, uh, and he's, a, he's an under 18 squad player at the moment. But yeah, he, he's called up and he played uh, in their full international match against Singapore. Um, and yeah, he actually, um, <laughs> I, I, in reading about him, he was 16 when he made his senior international debut against Turkmenistan last oh, November. Wow. Yeah, so uh, I'm going to try and find a copy of the um, highlights for that game. Put it. He's already got four caps. Yeah, that's mental. And yes. he's got a local donut company named after him. <laughs> Apparently, <laughs> yeah, an international brand, very nearly. <laughs> Don- Donkin think... Donuts. Exactly. Apparently. I think. Um, I think the reason he's been called up and the reason he gets his opportunities is that the Chinese Taipei national coach is a Brit called Gary White. Ah, he's been probably been looking around, sniffing yeah. around all the uh, team's youth, just see whether he can lock any down, I guess. Exactly. And in a very money ball sense, instead of getting analysis done, he's probably just said, find me every Chinese Taipei player in Europe, South America, and, you know, maybe North America. Do you know what? Apparently not. So I'm just looking at it here. He has been looking for uh, Taiwanese players, but apparently Donkin himself was the one who got in touch because his mum's family still live in uh, the country. That's remarkable. Imagine if Donkin, in you know, 10 years' time, is the McTominay of his time and has whoever the next England manager is texting him saying, you know, look, come, on, come over to the dark side. In and 10 years, is. he'll be 27. Uh, well, maybe five years then. <laughs> yeah, maybe but, uh, scale that one back a bit. Yeah. But anyway, I've, I've not seen Will Donkin play. I know so little about him, but he's on the Palace website because he plays for Chinese Taipei. And uh, That's not bad at all, actually, because you'd think if he, was, um, if he was trying to lock down players of kind of Taiwanese origin, they'd give him one game. But what, four caps at 17? You get the kind of feeling that he's probably going to be turning out for them a lot more of the next few years. Yeah, I, I don't disagree at all. And <laughs> I think, Lion, I think he got a win. Yeah, we've got to open that tab. They got a win. Yeah, hey. they, um, Singapore lost. It wasn't a uh, Will Donkin goal, but it was some other chap I'd never heard of before. So uh... <laughs> Surely not. Are you trying to <laughs> tell me you're not an expert on the state of football in Taiwan? This is the reason you're on here. I'm, I'm not an expert on the state of football at Palace, let alone anywhere else. <laughs> <laughs> okay, right, back to the matter in hand. Um, now, the last players we haven't talked about on the website are Sorloth, who was called back from international due to injury. Zaha, who was called back to the club due to injury. And I saw a really nice reply that a Palace fan had done on Twitter, where uh, I assume a chap from the Ivory Coast had asked Zaha in French about why he hadn't travelled. And a Palace fan had clearly gone to Google Translate oh, no. and done a he's injured thing. <laughs> and you're thinking, oh dear, oh dear. But oh. Um, at least, you know, we're, we're trying to look after our own. and. Um, yeah, you know, stand up for Wilf. He, he likes Ivory Coast. He wants to play. He's already got seven caps. It's come around really quickly. Mm. But, um, yeah, he was injured. Sorloth was injured. And um, they asked the Norwegian coach uh, what he felt of Sorloth's absence. Did they miss him? And they, it was along the lines of, of course, they've missed him. However, they understand he was legitimately injured. And it, it didn't seem like a moaning complaint. I felt yeah. pretty good and, news. I mean, you know, I last I remember they knocked off Australia like four nil or four one or something like that as well. So, you know, it's easy to be magnanimous if you're dicking Australia. Yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. And that's where I, I think talking of, of dicking off people that nobody like, um I think we need to talk a little bit just while we're here 
um, perhaps about Liverpool. Um, because I think the last time I checked, Mo Salah was playing in their he game was. against Greece. So I, I can uh, only hope that those Greeks have picked shite out. Uh, I don't know whether he's playing against Greece. Uh, was he in the, I, just he in was the squad? Playing, I think he was in the squad. I do know that he was playing against Portugal when he scored a goal against Portugal. Quite a nice goal. And <laughs> then Ronaldo just turned up in the 91st and 95th minute or whatever it was and scored two. And, and beat them pretty much by Yeah, itself. the headers were was it both headers, weren't they? They were oh, amazing headers as well. Yeah, there, there was a, there was a great little dive in that game by Ronaldo. Actually, yeah, uh, is that where he kicked the floor? He kicked the turf and then fell over like a really indignant giraffe. It was great. I did enjoy. That. Yeah, I did. I no, unfortunately, again, this is where for the people who suggested that um, we should have done more to protect Luca by either. <laughs> making him fake an injury or something. Mo Salah was rested for the game against Greece. Uh, was on the bench, but never got on. Um, yeah, so Liverpool perhaps taking that game a little more seriously than we are. Um, I do wonder if some of our internationals are going to be rested. I do wonder if um, Roy... I, I, I think Roy is perhaps a little bit too pragmatic to rest. Yeah, I don't see that happening either. I don't yeah. know why. I, I, much as I love Hodgson, I the one consistent thing I've had with his reign is uh, lack of, you know, la- lack of kind of common sense in regards to resting players and substitutions and all that. And he's not very good at it. So for better or for worse, I'd imagine we'd be playing a similar kind of squad to last time out. Yeah. No, I, I tend to agree with you. I, I, I would love Roy to, in that money ball sense. Again, look at the data and find out if he's only at 90% fitness, he's only going to run 80% as many kilometers or whatever it is and realize players do sometimes need a break and those breaks can be taken 70 minutes into a match. You can put on, Mm -hmm. you know, someone to do a job. Now, Roy admittedly did try that with James Tompkins and Damien Delaney. Fuck up the Spurs game the minute he was on. But um, I'll talk about that. Yeah, exactly. So, uh, you know, that's that's the exception that hopefully doesn't prove the rule. Mm. We are, uh, I think I think most of the people in red and blue would, would implore Roy to um, perhaps have our best teams available. But with Sorloff not having played, Zaha not having played, perhaps uh, we can give Luca a little more running. Um, I did yes. mean to look, and I forgot. Did James MacArthur play for the Scotland? Uh, that is a good question. I do. I know people hate us looking stuff up as we are on the pod, so I'm going to take this out and edit it in as. So, in my prep, I saw. Uh, no, no. X. So we do have some fit players to. Um... Yeah, I mean. Yeah, it's still James MacArthur. Let's not get too excited. But uh... oh, come on now! France has been resting Kabaye for us all season. <laughs> <laughs> you know, I, th- I think we've got to look at the uh, silver lining. Some of these, but That's um, true. yeah, and and to your earlier point, I think anybody who is worried about uh, Mister Kabaye leaving, I, I wouldn't look at his Insta. We have um, on the sub there is a, a significant following of. Uh, Mr. Kabaya's every move. Um, and yeah, all the pictures of France that he used to play, I mean, he, there are millions of them. Him and Pogba, him and Hugo Lloris, lots of him and Mandanda prior to Mandanda coming to Palace, then lots of him and Mandanda at Palace. And then there's several of him and Mandanda after Mandanda's left Palace. Um, I don't know what that says about, you know, Johan's view of staying at Palace after this summer but I can only hope it's not a yeah it's not I'm, an indication I'm still not I'm still in the kind of eh, I don't think he's that important to us camp uh, especially since he's what like 65 minutes before he keels over and dies into any kind of match and has to be subbed off so 
Yeah, and we're making him richer than Warren Buffett. Yes, so we are paying him a lot of money. And if we can raffle him off for a lot of money, then I wouldn't be averse to it at all. No, I, I don't disagree. Is his contract not up this season? So I don't. I think we're going to be raffling him off for nothing. Maybe then. But either way, we still make a lot of money back from not having to pay that contract. Yeah, correct. Exactly. And any signing on fee for Dubai is going to be enormous compared to, oh, yeah. you know, Joe Bloggs, top assist producer out of the championships or whatever. Oh, yes, very true. Or, you know, out of the Dutch, or sorry, not Dutch, the Danish or Swedish Primera Liga where Roy will be hunting. The, gone are the days of tall black French speaking men. And now we're going to get tall white Swedish speaking men. Exactly. Very much so. And on that topic, I, I do wonder if Sorloth is going to start um, against Liverpool to take some of the pressure off Christian Benteke. Or, and this is probably my last question for you, do you inspire Christian Benteke uh, to score against his former club? With <laughs> the Benteke question. God, it's, man, I just don't want Benteke to do well, but I'm so low on confidence with him. It's, I, I ranted about this the previous time I was on the podcast, um, but he just slows everything down. And if he's not on, which he often isn't, he doesn't really offer much. And the team, apart from winning headers, but the issue with that is the team loves punting it up to him to win headers when he's on the pitch. Because you know, it's an easy way out, really, isn't it? You look up, you look up across the pitch and you can see two risky passes into midfield that would require a bit of finesse. Or there's a giant Belgian dude up front that you can just hoof it to. I mean, you can kind of understand why they do it. I, on the other hand, really like Soloff. I think he's great. I would love it if he started against Liverpool, uh, partially because they might, you know, there's not much kind of preparation that can be done for him. He came from a minor league. He's played a few games for us and mostly in fits and spurts. So there's no way you can look at him and go, right, let's shut him down by doing this. Because so far, he hasn't looked like he's had that many weaknesses. He's big, he's quick. He's got really nice... uh, Really nice touch, a really nice kind of turn on him. So that would be an ideal thing, but we'll see how much that injury is affecting him. Wouldn't be surprised if Benteke starts and he uh, he comes on, maybe alongside him if we're losing or as replacement for him late on. Although again, Hodgson subs, who knows? Absolutely, and I I, I think to you made the point, and I, I'm just going to ride on your coattails. He he was more than once in the top 10 fastest players over the course of a match weekend. So um, for me, I, I think you look at him as a big, slow lump. Um, and, you know, and that, that's taken into consideration his haircut that is a, essentially a giant spoiler on top of his head. <laughs> but um, he's pretty quick, which I think when you're playing against Lovren, maybe less so Van Dyke. But I, I would say that, you know, if there's another way to get round Lovren and it's not just your nice touch or towering over him with a header, I think a little bit of speed is going to help. Or just confusing him with something shiny, maybe. <laughs> stay, stay Jan Lovren here. It's hardly Rio Ferdinand in his prime, let's be honest. <laughs> yeah, well, I, uh, I'm hoping that uh, Liverpool haven't been paying attention the saw loss and perhaps but I I again to our point about substitutions and changes I do feel Roy is probably just going to play Benteke but I, I, I think that's what we're all going to be expecting isn't it we're yeah. expecting Benteke up top um, we, maybe saw loss alongside him but don't hold your breath on that one we do have the alternative of two other goal machines in uh, James Daly Jim Daly from the under 23s formerly of the under 18 who uh, played today against Chon, uh, was brought down for a penalty that was then swiftly dispatched by Lokilo. Um, and we have a Connor Wickham, who played 45 minutes, the first 45 at Charlton, and scored. Don't be ridiculous. Connor Wickham doesn't exist. He is more than just an apparition. No, um, yeah, I, I saw him today. His highlights are on the Palace website, and he scored. Do I reckon think... it... it... Might just be Jonathan Benteke in a Conor Wickham. 
Actually, tell you what, where's, where's John? Where's John Teke? Bring him back. That'll be fun. I think John Teke is at somewhere like Oldham. Now. <laughs> <laughs> bit, yeah. bit of a high level for a minute. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Oh, he was awful. <laughs> he was. He in that. In, we was give him one or two runouts. I can't remember. But yeah, I do remember one time he uh, he got the ball. It was one on four. He surged, well, trundled over the halfway line and took a speculative shot from about 40 yards out. <laughs> <laughs> it, it was so far wide. It genuinely looked like a crap pass. It was brilliant stuff. I, I'm a big, big fan of his, like, I don't know, 25 minutes in a fellow shirt. <laughs> 25 I just love, minutes. I just love the yeah. whole concept of buying a footballer's brother just so that he'll come for you. <laughs> I, I, yeah, this is where I... You'd never have seen Ron Nodes do anything <laughs> like this. Simon Jordan wouldn't even talk to agents, so let's assume he wouldn't have done this. Steve Parrish has n- no hesitation in bidding thirty-two million for Mickey Batshit just to try and get Steve Mandanda for a cut price. <laughs> and we also signed and then paid for I think two years Christian Benteke's brother just to get Christian Benteke, <laughs> which just... is. It's great, yeah. isn't it? It makes things fun. It does. And exactly, when you're sat there, fuck this burger's expensive in the other way that <laughs> hasn't been renovated since, you know, the war when it was a bomb shelter. Um, that's when I think that's where this money's going. It's going on John Teke instead of the Arthur Way or the disabled section or any of that kind of stuff. But yeah, not a, a, but exactly. I will happily, if that's what it took to get Big Chris, then mm. so be it. Um, and on that kind of final Connor Wickham point, for the, for those who don't believe he exists, um, next Friday, the 6th of April, the under-23s are playing at Selhurst, a 1pm kickoff. So apologies to anybody who has a real job. But um, they, uh, yeah, uh, Connor is expected to play, uh, as is James Daly and Lamika, Lakilo, all the other exciting also ran to maybe... We'll get overexcited about it in the summer. I can guarantee you I will be getting overexcited on every podcast between now and the start of the season. I think but, that's um, what you have to do, isn't it? Exactly. Again, uh, Wickham doesn't exist. He's a goal machine. Goal machine. I reckon there's a chance. There's like seven games left in the Premier League. I think there's an outside chance Connor Wickham going to the World Cup. <laughs> that's him. Him and Glenn Murray up front. Do it. Can you imagine. Do it. Yeah, <laughs> that's how yeah. he win the World Cup. And they they'd like him in Russia as well, Glenn. Mars. He fiddles his tax. They love all that fucking. Oh, it's great! And his, his haircut shit as well. <laughs> <laughs> one that's the perfect uh, note to end on, Glenn Murray's shit well, haircut. One final thing I want to talk about in regards to international football. Very short point. Gibraltar won a game. They <laughs> did. Who did they play? They they knocked off Latvia one nil, uh, with a horrifically deflected free kick. I watched, oh, I, didn't see it. I watched it. It was brilliant. Like, there's about five people there supporting them, and they went mental. It was <laughs> great. I, that's what football is all about. They've got this shitty stadium carved into a bit of rock with an airport next to it. They're basically just there to annoy Spain and beat Latvia, who I think lost the Faroe Islands earlier this year. Latvia are apparently a terrible, terrible team. Who'd have thunk it? Anyway, yes. That's- Something I want to give a shout no, out to brave Gibraltarians. No, and, and you know, normally I'd be happy to. to the only anecdote I've got is related to Alton, which is um, former Palace player Bobby Bowery, who was the first Premier League player to score for St. Kitts and Nevis. <laughs> um, and I, I think we talked about this on the last pod. He was probably the, the uh, only St. Kitts and or the first St. Kitts and Nevis player to get relegated from league with Palace. Um, his son played for um, Jamaica uh, in, their, in their game and as fate would have it they played against St Kitts and Nevis and not only did he have the ball in the net on his debut it was then ruled out for offside. Hey. <laughs> so yeah um, and apparently I, 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 don't, um, I don't have any strong relationship with Bobby or any inside track but um, Bobby wasn't able to make it because Bobby represents uh, as an agent for Alfie Mawson um, and was at the England game and around 
Alfie to, I guess, keep him away from the dentist chair, something like that, um, and wasn't unable to make his son's debut for uh, Jamaica, which is terrible. Sh- but that is sad. But to yeah. bring it full circle, apparently Bobby Burry is uh, is the agent of Glenn Murray. No way. That's <laughs> really <Seriously>? sleep. <laughs> Who'd have thunk it? That, yeah, wow. Look at I'm, that. I'm impressed. Full exactly. We've we've done very well there. Our our two man pod full of anecdotes and knowledge. I don't know why we bring that Northern Ireland bloke on there all the time. Chatting chat. Oh, I think he's died. He fell down some stairs and died, didn't he? Dear. We got uh, in laser eyes people. and you know, broken <laughs> foot. So, uh, anyway, mm. thank you to, for listening. Thank you for joining me, Nikki. And um, I look forward to doing this again soon. Absolutely. It's been good.